Hi, Don Lopez here with you today. And today we're going to be reviewing FAR Section 3H, which is everything you ever wanted to know about research and development costs. As a general rule of thumb, when deciding whether we're going to expense or capitalize those research and development costs, just remember that accountants are conservative. We have a conservative we have a conservatism principle that we honor, and basically what it says is the glass is always half empty. When in doubt, overstate expenses, liabilities, losses, understate revenues, assets, gains. We want to take a very conservative approach when putting together our financial statements. Our goal with research and development costs is to be able to identify, classify, and calculate our research and development costs. I first want to make sure we understand the difference between research and development. They don't always go hand in hand. So research is the discovery of new knowledge. Development is the translation or the application of research, that new knowledge, into a plan or design for a new product or process. We have lots of costs associated with research and development and they can be direct or indirect. Some examples of direct costs would include materials, testing, the use of consultants or contract services. Indirect would be a portion of the indirect costs related to the R&D project. And we can also look at equipment and facilities that are used only for research and development projects fixed assets and intangibles. Some indirect costs would include a portion of indirect costs that are related to R&D projects. Other things that we can include in our research and development costs would include things like equipment and facilities that are used only in our R&D projects, and then fixed assets or intangible assets that are purchased and do not have alternative future uses. On page 3H2, we start out with a reminder that ordinary expenses are not R&D costs. Examples of costs that are not considered R&D expenses would include market research related to a product for the company, and that would be a marketing cost and is part of operating expenses. The reason why I point that out is I don't want you to fall into the trap of, if you see the word research, that you automatically assume that it's a research and development cost. It's context sensitive. If a marketing research firm is doing marketing research, then that is expenses they incur in their ordinary course of business. And so that's not a research and development cost. Let's take a look at the example that's presented on page 3H2. We have a list of costs we have a list of expenses and their associated dollar amounts. Remember, we need to be able to identify, classify, and calculate. So we're going to start with that identification process. Can we look at that list and identify what is research and development costs? We have an exploring reformulation of an existing process, design of molds and jigs that involve new technology, Adaptation of an existing process to fit a commercial customer's requirements. Purchase price of a machine that will be used only for the mold and jig design. And troubleshooting of existing machinery that is the commercial production. So again, identify. One, two, three, four, five bullet points. The first one, reformulation. That's your keyword there. Reformulation, that is going to fall into our category of research and development costs. Why? Because it's a re reformulation of an existing process. Design molds and jigs, new technology. Again, our keyword here is new technology. Yes, that's a research and development cost. Adaptation of an existing process, no. Adapting existing processes is not going to meet the threshold criteria for research and development. Purchase price of a machine that will only be used for the mold and jig design? Yes, because it's only being used in our research and development processes. If it had alternative uses or had, 
if it had alternative uses, then it would not qualify. But since it says specifically only used to mold and design, the answer is yes. And finally, troubleshooting of existing machinery, no. So that's the process of identifying. What we have to also be able to do is classify and calculate. Classify is really simple. All research and development costs are expense as incurred. We don't put them on our balance sheet. We don't get to capitalize them. We expense them as we incur them. So that's how we classify them as an expense. And to calculate, well, all we have to do is add up those numbers of the particular examples that would qualify under research and development costs. So if I add up the appropriate numbers from the chart we just reviewed, the 18,000, 25,000, the 57,000, I would have R&D expense of $100,000. Very simple, right? Again, identify, classify, calculate. Let's put this into practice by looking at a few multiple choice questions. We'll start with multiple choice question number 110, which is on page MCQ 3-21. It tells us in question 110 that a company incurred research and development costs in 2005 as follows. And then it says the equipment acquired for use in research and development projects that have alternative future uses is $1 million. The depreciation on the above equipment is $150,000, materials, compensation, outside consulting fees, and indirect costs appropriately allocated. Here's the deal. Every single one of those expenses will be considered research and development cost, except the equipment that we bought for a million dollars. How do I know? Because it says the equipment has alternative future uses. Now, you might be wondering why I'm including the depreciation on the equipment. If the equipment is not an R&D cost, how can the associated depreciation be an R&D cost? It's because the equipment has an alternative future use. For right now, for today, it is being used in our research and development. That means the depreciation, which we know depreciation is calculated per period. And so the depreciation calculated this period is an expense of this period that will be included in our research and development costs. I also want to point out those indirect costs. It says they are appropriately allocated. And so we can assume that they have been exactly what they say, appropriately allocated, so we will include that as well. When we add up the 150,000, 200, 500, 100, and that final 250,000, we come up with a total of 1.2 million. That's answer choice letter C. That's going to be the right answer, 1.2 million letter C. 